Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome back to the NPTEL MOOC course on developing soft skills and personality. Uh, this is the first week and we are in the second module. We have just started and in this module, we are going to look at soft skills, but not exactly the skills as such, but then I am just going to take you back as what is required to prepare you for developing these skills. So, it is mostly about planning and preparing for imbibing the soft skills which are required for developing your personality. Now, before I start, have you gone through the video fully? Let me recapitulate, let me give you the highlights of the previous video just in one single slide very quickly. Highlights of the last lecture, if you remember, I particularly mentioned that learning is really behavioral modification, nothing else. It has to effect on your behavior, it has to modify your behavior for the better. You cannot learn anything that you do not want to. You need to create the desire for learning from this course and you have to be proactive, you have to download the videos, create definite time for watching and taking notes and you need to reflect on your own, you need to discuss the course with your friends and then you need to check whether you are able to develop the required behavior then and there, at least every week you need to do some self-assessment. You need to do experiential learning, that is you need to experience the course, it is not like mugging up and then reproducing, you need to experience and experiential learning is possible only if you attempt all the quizzes, assignments and exam, even if you are not concerned about getting important that you do this and then experience and then learn how to assess yourself and then progress along with the course. The course aims at changing your behavior, not like other courses which aim at a very superficial physical level such as some of the corporate officers train the candidates just for one week, ten days and then they give cosmetic touches uh, in terms of soft skills. Now here the course is aiming at a whole complete personality development and the approach is a holistic approach in which the physical, mental, emotional, psychological, cultural and physical as well as spiritual levels are being covered. And there are two phases of this course. The first one which you are doing now is the first course in this series and this is developing soft skills and personality and this focuses on personal and professional skills. The sequence to this course which will be taken up later, that will be the next course and that will be on enhancing soft skills and personality and that will focus on interpersonal and management skills. Now, uh, I am fond of asking you questions and then let me start this module with another question. Let us say, if God grants you one wish and that wish will make you happy and peaceful forever in your life, now what should you ask him? if you are given just a, such a chance. Now, would you ask for uh, money? Would you ask for intelligence? Would you ask for knowledge? Would you ask for good looks? Would you ask for a very beautiful or a handsome life partner? Think about it. God is granting you one wish and if you ask something that is correct, that will give you complete happiness and peace, what would be that wish? Now, I would tell you that you should ask God to grant you that one wish in terms of accumulating lot of soft skills. It should be soft skills. Why? If you are able to have all the required soft skills, which are actually people skills, 
you will be able to get everything that I said before, whether it is money, intelligence, knowledge or uh, whatever you want in this life, everything you will be able to achieve just if you are able to get the soft skills. So, it will bring you everything that you need to live a very happy and peaceful life. As I said, soft skills are people skills. I will go into the uh, details of soft skills maybe in the coming videos. Right now, I want you to be planned and prepared to change your behavioral pattern in terms of understanding and imbibing these skills and preparing you for that. Now, remember, uh, when I say that soft skills are people skills, it is the people around you who are going to contribute to your success or failure. Let me explain how. If you are a student, so you want to be the topper of your class. So, let us say you want to score 100 marks in the examination and then let us assume that there is only one to whom the teacher will give 100. Let us also assume that you got 100 marks. Now, it is not just because you got 100 marks, you are on the top of the class, it is because that there are so many others who resolved in their mind that it is enough that they get 99, some thought that 90 is enough, some thought that 80 is enough, some were below 60, 50, some did not even bother to give the exam. Now, these people together they have given you that success and they have kept you on the top of your class by not competing with you enough, by not giving you tough competition or by making you do better in giving you the kind of competition that you needed. But all it means is like it is not that you alone is uniquely responsible for getting any success and same thing goes with failure also. It is because you are not able to manage people skills, it is because that you are not able to handle certain situations, it is because that you are not able to have those soft skills that will create the best impression in that environment, you probably got failure. Now, uh, it is also said that 80 percent of your happiness and peace depends on the life or even in business, depending on the partner with whom you spend your maximum time with. So, if it is, if you are married and then it is your, it is the wife or the husband who is going to determine 80 percent of the happiness or peace in your life. If you are not married and if you are in a business and then you are a workaholic, you are spending maximum time in the office, it is your boss with whom you are interacting, he is going to determine that 80 percent of your happiness or uh, peace in your life. So, it is the people to whom you are spending maximum time, they determine the maximum amount of happiness or peace in your life. Now, if you have understood that, now the next point is like then how do you make these people help you get this happiness and peace by interacting with them and then by making them contribute to your happiness and peace. It is important that you know how to interact with them to bring harmony and peace in your life. And before you learn how to make them give what you want, you need to know what you really want in this life. Now, only if you know what you really want in your life, you will be able to make people help you to achieve that. So, to do that, I just want you to tell you some story and then find out whether uh, uh, you have actually made up your mind in that direction. I am going to tell you a lot of stories in this course and in fact, uh, the mode in which I want to run this course is just like you want to come to the class that is you just download the video and watch it. You have some story, something that I have read, something that I have taken from some author something I think is useful in my life and I know that it is going to affect you and then contribute to your life and that is the story that I want to share with. Herewith, I am going to begin with the story and in this story, you are the main character, you are the main protagonist and as the story begins, you are walking with a uh, huge 
uh, set of people, they are, uh, they are in a crowd and this crowd is moving and it looks like the crowd is little bit moaning. They are not in a happy mood, they are in a serious mood. You are part of it and then they are all dressed in a very simple sober color. Some of them are in black, some in white, some in very simple dress and you can understand that it looks like something like a funeral and later you understand that it is actually a funeral ceremony and then people are all moving towards the burial ground and you are also walking with them. And as you walk and then you move towards, you see a coffin that is kept there and out of your curiosity, you just want to know who is there in the coffin. You just open the lid of the coffin and then you just take a quick peek into the coffin and then you are surprised or rather you are shocked to note that inside the coffin you are lying. It is your face that you see inside the coffin and the moment you see it looks like as if you have merged with the body that is there in the coffin. You are lying there in the coffin and then you just look outside and then you could see that there are four sets of people surrounding you. One set is your friend circle, okay, your childhood friend, your friend from the uh, workplace and then uh, friend from your neighborhood. So, there is one set of people who are just your friends and then there is another set that is coming from your family. So, your parents, your brothers, your cousins and then your relatives, they are all there and then you also find that there is another religious group of people to whom you actually go for praying or uh, when you go to the temple or church or mosque, you just go and then meet these people regularly. And then there is also a fourth set of people, so that is related to your profession, that is your boss. Now, you are there and these people are about to say some good things about you or are they really saying some good things about you? You are curious, you just want to know what are they telling about me. You try to hear them very sharply, but you are not able to hear. Now, this is the task that is given to you. Imagine now that you are there in the coffin, your life is over, you are at the end of your life and just one minute you will be just buried and then people are going to leave that place. And on one side you have somebody from your family, your father, mother, brother, sister, somebody whom you very closely loved. And the other side there is this boss and at other side there is this friend and then there is another side there is somebody from the uh, religious community that you belong to. Now the task is Think about this situation, select a calm place, visualize this, take a piece of paper, as you cannot hear what these people are telling about you, you write the dialogue for these people. Now, you visualize what is it this friend going to tell about you, what will your sister or brother or cousin or mother going to tell something about you. What is it that priest going to tell about you and what is that boss or your colleague going to tell about you? Imagine this and then write at least two, three sentences for each of these people. Will the father say that such a loving son that I lost? Is the wife going to say that uh, I have never seen such a husband in my life and I am going to uh, live forever in his memory or will she say that good riddance to bad rubbish, so I am glad that he passed away. What will the boss say? He was such an asset to the entire company and he was doing so many things to change the society or will the boss say, no, I am glad that he passed away. He was such a big liability to the company. And what will the friend say? 
Will he say that whenever I needed help, he was there for me to support, he was the best friend that I ever had or is he going to tell that he was such a betrayer, I could never trust him. What are the words these people are going to tell after your death, knowing fully well that you are not going to hear what they are going to tell, but what is it that they are going to tell about? Now, imagine that, write it, visualize and then you plan how you will lead your life according to what these people are going to tell about you. Okay. And this is what is actually narrated in the book by Stephen Covey, that is the seven habits of highly effective people. He says that you need to cultivate this habit, this habit of beginning with the end in mind, begin with the end in mind. So, all the time we begin certain things with a very short sighted approach and we do not visualize what will happen in the end. So, begin with the end in mind. If you have visualized this situation, this is how the author tells, he says, says that think deeply, what would you like each of these speakers to say about you and your life? What kind of husband? wife, father or mother, would you like their words to reflect? What kind of son or daughter or cousin? What kind of friend? What kind of working associate? What character would you like them to have seen in you? What contributions? What achievements would you want them to remember? Look carefully at the people around you. What difference would you like to have made in their lives? Now, I am just going to link this thought with another famous personality whom everybody knows that is Steve Jobs and then he gave his most famous speech at Stanford University in one of the commencement addresses. So, it is uh, now popularly called Steve Jobs' commencement address. You can easily google it out. I want you to listen to the entire speech. I, I have put the link here. You can also use the link, but you can also just google it out and it is so famous, you can just get it immediately. Now, from that speech, I just want to highlight two, three important points where again we understand that Steve Jobs is clearly talking from this perspective of beginning with something, but with the end in mind. Some excerpts from the speech which are worth reading. Uh, I am just reading out from his speech. Remembering that I will be dead soon is the most important tool I have ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life. Because almost everything, all external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death. Mind you, when uh, Steve Jobs was giving this commencement address, he knew that he was detected for cancer, but he was still hoping that he might survive because doctor said that it was too bad, but still uh, there is a decent chance of surviving. So, he was not sure, but he had this uh, uh, mindset that death has given him and he started revisioning his life accordingly. So, that is why he says that things just fall away in the face of death, leaving only what is truly important remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. We all live a life as if we are going to live for 300 years, 500 years or forever, but we never know what time, what corner of the street death is just awaiting. And this is what Steve Jobs says, the moment you take that aspect in your mind that death is impending life becomes much more meaningful and then you start doing only those things that are relevant. You are already naked, there is no reason not to follow your heart. No one wants to die, even people who want to go to heaven do not want to die to get there and yet death is the destination we all share. No one has ever escaped it and that is as it should be because Death is very likely the single best invention of life. It is life's change agent. 
it clears out the old to make way for the new. Right now, the new is you, but someday, not too long from now, you will gradually become the old and be cleared away. Sorry to be so dramatic, but it is quite true. And then, you know already that he became the richest man, but he says that being the richest man in the cemetery does not matter to me. Going to bed at night, saying we have done something wonderful, that is what matter to me. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. The only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you have not found it yet, keep looking, do not settle. Now, one of the aims of this course is to make you understand that you need to find it. And then only when you find it, you will realize that you need to develop these skills as well as your personality to achieve it. And in the context, as he says, you have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. This approach has never let me down. If you remember in the previous uh, module, I was telling you that you have trust in the course, you have faith in the instructor. If you react negatively, if you start having self doubts, will I be able to do this? Will I be able to achieve this? So, then you are not going to progress much. Uh, in fact, in the learning itself, any kind of antipathy that is hatred or negative feelings towards any teacher, any instructor is not going to help you. You need to develop the trust, you need to have the belief that okay, this course is going to change me, this instructor is going to do something to me. Now, that is what Steve Jobs is telling in a different manner, he says that trust something, it can be even your karma, so it can be even your gut feeling, it can be something like this course, trust it. The other thing that Steve Jobs was doing was that he put a kind of uh, note on his mirror and every day when he was going, he was looking at this note and then he was making alterations accordingly. And what is this note? If today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I am about to do today? So, whenever he asked this question, many things he was supposed to do he realized that were actually irrelevant and he should not be doing that. If today was that last day, he realized that he should be doing something else and not the thing that he actually thought of doing. He changed, he made his life very qualitative whenever he thought about this. Keep asking the same question when you are going to start something, you just see whether it is of high value, low value or no value. If you realize that it is of no value and it is not going to make any change to your overall personality, overall career, overall life, then it is better that you avoid doing it and in eventual times you completely stop doing it. Now, in both examples, the example that I gave from Stephen Covey about the visualization of the person who is lying in the coffin and it is you and then there are four important people around you and then they are going to say good things or bad things depending on what you are going to do now in your life, one example. The second one that is so closely related is the actual death that happened for Steve Jobs later, but then he had that creative visualization of his death which was impending and made important alterations, modifications in his behavior that helped him to live a very qualitative life the moment he had that realization. Now, in our context, how do you visualize this end? How do we conceptualize the end? I am giving you some suggestions. One, one obvious meaning is death of course. So, as, as it is narrated by both, it is death. When you visualize death, you can make life more meaningful. But uh, it also means 
that we have to ascertain our purpose. It is not just identifying that we have a uh, life, but we also need to ascertain our purpose, which means that we have to ascertain our purpose, meaning and mission in life and live a fruitful life before death catches us unawares. Other possible ways in which we can interpret end, end of this video, what are you going to do at the end of this video? The end of the course, what will you do after this course is over? How are you going to integrate that course with your life? The end of your career, what are you going to do at the end of your career in your college? Are you going to start a new career at another place, a new job or the end of a job, new position, promotion, higher post, change in areas, fields, etc. Visualize, conceptualize that end and make what you are doing now very meaningful. Could it be end of the day? What are you going to do at the end of the day? If you are watching especially this video at the end of the day, what are you going to do uh, now? End of the week? end of the month, ask yourselves, what will you do after 5 years? What are you going to do after 10 years? What are you going to do after 15 years? What will you do after 25 years? What are you planning to do in your lifetime? Now, plan ahead and set your goals and objectives by asking these questions. 5 years from now, I want to be this. 15 years from now, I will be here. 25 years from now, I will be called so and so. At the point of my death, when I am lying in my coffin, these are the dialogues that people will be telling about me. I am sure about it. Now, once you have that, then do the things that will have a meaning and make a difference in your life. You also try to answer these questions. What have you planned to do at the end of this course? What will you be doing at the end of your degree and graduation? Where will you be after 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, 25 years? And what is your lifetime mission? What would you like to visualize it by breaking into small and achievable parts? What would you finally be as a self-actualized individual? I am going to spend one entire video on what is this self-actualization or what makes you the self actualized individual. But right now, park that thought, we will come back to this. But the aim of this course is to facilitate, to give you that environment in which you will actually become a self-actualized individual. You should be able to become what you have the potential to become in very brief words. And before I conclude the video, let us conclude with Another thought from Steve Jobs, he says, we are here to put a dent in the universe, otherwise why else even be here? If you are here, if you are living, you need to make a dent in the universe, you need to make your footprint felt in the universe, you need to cause ripples and leave an impact. Now, how are you going to cause that impact? Think about it, we will continue with this thought in the coming video. Thank you.